Okay guys, so um, I'm going to be installing the uh, smoke system that I got from ppgsmoke.com and um, I asked what you guys wanted to see online so I'll just review the smoke system real quick and then try to film as much of the install as I possibly can. Um, I don't have a tripod with me so I'm going to do as best as I can. Alright, so this is what I got for the prototype. So it comes <clears throat> with the bottle itself. Nice neoprene case, fits the bottle and the pump is in here, the pump housing. Um, it also comes with a nice see-through um, area so you can see how much smoke oil you have. Um, I don't really know if you will see that during flight, but I guess when you're filling it up, that'd be nice to have. Okay, so it's an all-in-one unit. You can see the pumps in there, uh, the tubing from the pump. You have a check valve in line, and that goes all the way to your nozzle which is right here. This is the nozzle that you get with it. And I actually have the rivet nut. Comes with a rivet nut, a rivet nut, and a lock washer. Okay. And that is an M5 nut. So I ha already have a rivet nut drilled for the Aviator PPG nozzle, which did not work out for me. I ended up breaking it by over torquing it. But um, I already have a hole drilled. You can see it right there. So, lesson learned number one, I wasn't paying attention when I drilled this. I thought, hey, it'd be easier to drill on the back side. That way I could have all of my components kind of on this side away from the prop. But what I didn't realize is that there is a heat shield on this side of the exhaust or some type of double wall. I'm assuming it's a heat shield. Um, so when you drill through that, you have, <laughs> you have to drill a larger hole in order to fit the tool in there and then the nozzle as well. So um, that was a huge pain in the ass. Well, that appeared to be double walled and I was not expecting that. But I suppose I should have. I'm now noticing that there's a two walls here. So I definitely f***ed that up and I don't know how I'm going to fix it. Shit. So definitely drill it on the other side. You won't have any of the issues that I'm having. I had to modify the rib nut tool to fit in there. Um, and I had to drill a gigantic hole on the uh, heat shield. It doesn't do anything to the exhaust. Um, I know people are concerned with um, cracking and whatnot, um, but just obviously go go slow, drill the hole slow, try not to overstress it and uh, clean up your edges, right? You wanna reduce uh, any stress risers that you can, right? That's what's gonna cause a crack. Oh, and the tool you'll need if you don't have one, you can do this with a bolt and a and a nut. That's what Aviator gives you if you buy their nozzle assembly. They just give you a bolt, some washers, and a nut. And essentially, what you do is you thread the bolt into the rib nut, and uh, with the with a nut already on the bolt, and then you hold the bolt stationary and you torque the nut down. And what that does is obviously pulls the bolt up. It expands or crushes the uh, the rib nut. But this is the correct tool, so this is what you should have. Um, and it's pretty simple, it's just like a rivet gun, except it's made for rib nuts. So, the one I bought was off Amazon. I'll put a link below to this one. Um, this came with all the metric sizes, so M8, M6, uh, M5, and M4. And I think even, yeah, M3. And then all the, all the adapters that go with it. Um, so, I don't see why it wouldn't work. I'm sure if you're using this every day, you wouldn't want to buy the cheapest one you can. But for the one or two rib nuts, I'll be installing, it'll work fine. So yeah, I'm gonna get that drilled out. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory and I'll let you know how that goes and then we'll catch back up. All right, peace. <clears throat> okay, so I got the exhaust off. Um, I had to take the exhaust off. I was gonna try to just do it with the exhaust on the paramotor, but um, I realized that once I drill that riv nut out, there's gonna be a rivet material in the exhaust pipe and I need to get that out. Um, so quick tip, when you go to take your exhaust off, if you don't want to replace the springs, just leave them on and take the um, exhaust flange off because these springs, they're a bitch. So they're a pain to take on and off and you may not have extra security cable lying around. So this is just easier. If there's a gasket there, um, you could probably use it a couple times. If you're really worried, you could always throw some gasket maker on there, no big deal. And if it does leak a little bit, it's also not a huge deal. So yeah, got the exhaust off. This is that double wall I was talking about. You can see it here. 
So I don't know if the tool I have is going to fit in here. I'm guessing it's not. Um, so I may have to modify the tool or cut this hole bigger. I don't know. Um, but this is the rib nut that I have installed in there. So you can see that red RTV has been holding up. It's got five flights on it um, already. Um, just this hole was plugged with a bolt. So when you're not using the smoke system, you can find a bolt of matching thread size and thread it in there. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, that RTV is holding up great. So I'm going to do that again just to seal it. And um, what you're supposed to drill it with is a seven millimeter drill bit. So I didn't have a seven millimeter drill bit. So one quarter is just below that. Um, so I did a quarter and then reamed it out just a little bit. You want the rib nut to fit in there tight. When you tap it in, you want it to be tight and then use the rib nut tool to expand it. So, all right, I'm gonna drill this out. I'll show you the hole before we get the rib nut in there. And I may have to modify the tool. So uh, I probably won't show that, but I'll show you what I do to the tool after it's done. All right. <clears throat> All right, so this is the nozzle of the rib nut gun, and this is what I was talking about with this first hole here. I had to get that hole big enough so that the rib nut uh, face of that tool has to fit exactly on the face of the inner side. So if you drilled this hole on the other side, you'd, you would not have this problem. So I made it way harder on myself um, by having to make that hole bigger, but that fits in there perfect now. So I'm going to get the rib nut on there, whoops, just dropped it, and we'll install it. Alright, so here's how you put the rivet. You just thread that right onto the tool, okay. I'm going to put some red RTV on here, and then we're going to insert it into that hole that we drilled. And then we're just going to clamp it down. I'm not going to do it right now because it'll crush the nut. You clamp this down, and that sets the nut. Alright, let's get some red RTV. Okay, it's got a little RTV here. I'm just going to spread that around the nozzle. There you go. And by the way, I didn't say to do this in the directions. I'm just doing it because I feel like it'll make a better seal. All right, here we go. So you can insert that just like so. Okay, now it's all the way in there and I'm just gonna compress this. Okay, so you thread the tool out and then your rib nuts in there. You wanna make sure that that face is real smooth too. You can see the RTV kind of squished out there. I'm gonna let this uh, cure overnight um, but that's it. And like I said, if you were to not have made the mistake and drilled through the heat shield, um, you'd be done in way less time. So go out and get the right tools. Go get a 7 millimeter drill bit. Get yourself a rib nut gun and just do it the right way. Get the uh, high temp thread locker, maybe even some RTV. You shouldn't need the RTV, but I mean, it doesn't hurt anything. Uh, it just creates a better seal. Like I said, a small exhaust like that, that like that's not going to be a huge deal. Um, but it should really uh, secure that rib nut in place. So that's it. I'm going to get the exhaust put back on. Um, yeah, and that's your completed uh, rib nut installation. Uh, I guess the next section of this video will be actually putting the smoke system on the paramotor. So I'm actually going to fill this up with oil right now and just see how much it pumps. So we'll check that out real quick. Okay, so most guys just run baby oil in this. Obviously, I'm sure you could run uh, actual AV or aviation smoke oil, um, but baby oil is much more accessible. Um, I don't know the price difference. I think baby oil is probably a little more expensive by volume, but there you go. I just put that in there. Probably have a little trouble seeing it. We get in the light. That's one bottle. Almost filled that up. Um, and yeah, let's see if it pumps. Okay, I've just got it clamped in a vise right now. I'm trying to hold the camera while I do this. So, yeah, I'm just going to hit the switch with my finger. I'm going to hit the button and we're going to see how it pumps. So there it goes. It primed itself. As you can see, that's, that's a decent amount of oil. Um, it's a decent stream of oil there. So there you go, pump works great. So that's it, the exhaust is back on. The next step will be throwing that nozzle on and uh, making some chemtrails, so peace. All right guys, it's day two. So yesterday we installed the rib nut, um, let the RTV cure overnight so it should be nice and solid. And today it's as simple as threading the nozzle in and attaching the smoke system. So 
Um, I got some high temp thread lock and uh, we should be good to go. So let's get started. All right, so here's where we left off yesterday. Uh, we got the rib nut installed and I've just got a little M5 bolt in here. This is what I'm gonna use to uh, plug the hole when I don't have the smoke system installed. But it's also a good check just to make sure those threads are all in good shape. So that RTV is nice and cured. You can see it's kind of oozed out there. That's perfect, this is exactly what I wanted. Nice, nice good seal. Um, there's my bolt. So let's get that uh, smoke system installed. recommend uh, Permatex high temp thread lock but I have Loctite high temp thread lock so that's what I'm using. And it also comes with a little washer so make sure you put that on too. All right so that's the installation of the nozzle. See it's pretty pretty straightforward. Got the hose going to the pump. So next I'm going to figure out where I want to put the pump on the motor, I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna put it right here on the uh, enduro frame. Alright, so it actually took me a little while to figure out where I wanted to install this thing. So the way I received the prototype, the wiring. It goes to the um, the button and the uh, and the tube that goes to the nozzle were already installed in that. That's probably how you get the uh, production model too. Um, so those lengths are fixed. So with the prototype, it's a little bit short. I don't know if that's changed in the um, in the production model. I mean, lengthening that wire is not hard to do at all. You could do that, but I just left it uh, the length that it was, which is not a huge deal. Um, it's not going to get in the way or anything like that. It's not restricting any motion. Um, but this is for sure a janky install. Um, I'll probably be looking to do something more permanent um, once I know if this works. So I've just got the uh, button attached here with some Gorilla Tape. It's not going anywhere. Obviously I'm gonna probably not be able to activate that with any thick gloves on. So tomorrow when I test this, um, it's gonna be pretty chilly out. So I'll have to, have to figure something out. Um, how I had to mount the unit <coughs> Um, it comes with buckles, so I buckled it to the frame. Um, it's, this is gonna be different for every unit, but for mine, I didn't, I couldn't have this sliding down um, because of where it's located on the paramotor and, and the length of the tubing and everything. So I had to put a zip tie from the top buckle all the way up to this little cross member here in the frame, just to prevent it from sliding down. It's actually not holding it on. And I've also got an extra, um, extra Velcro strap that I had laying around. I just threw that around the uh, the reservoir as well just for a little added added safety then the tubing itself you can see comes from the pump which is behind that fin it comes straight up and I just routed it right over I didn't even attach it it's not going anywhere right down into the exhaust the nozzle like I said that's just got a lock washer and um, some thread lock on there that's pretty much all you need uh, next step will be to fire this baby up and test it, which I'm going to do right now. I don't know. I'm going to let the engine warm up for a little while, but I really don't know how much throttle I can give it, how much I can test it, because my son's upstairs sleeping and it's late, so I don't want to piss off the neighbors who are right next door. My neighbors are really close, so. But uh, yeah, we'll give it a shot. So there's a real possibility that I can have the fire department called on me because I definitely just smoked out the uh, entire street. So uh, proof of concept completed. Uh, tomorrow we fly.
My smoke system is malfunctioning.